Brandon from AccuFire Technology. We're here today with uh, Tim Kellner from Kellner Snipercraft. Uh, we're going to go over his setups and he's going to walk us through why he has each item on each one of these. Uh, so Tim, walk us a little bit through your, your long range setup and what you have going on here. Okay, I primarily teach long range marksmanship to SWAT snipers. I have an FBI sniper course and even an aerial platform course. And uh, one of the biggest things is you have to have good optics and good equipment. And if you have equipment that you can use, then it's worthless. You can have the most expensive, high-end, greatest thing out there, but if you don't know how to use it, it's worthless. So I make sure not only do I have stuff that is good quality, but it's stuff that I know how to use. So we'll start with just a simple bolt-action rifle. Um, I do have a Graybo stock on there. McMillan was a good company, and now they've gone over and started a different line. Graybo is a definite stock that I trust and rely on. Uh, Triarch has their own actions that are coming out here soon, which I have one of the prototypes on here, and I have a track barrel from Triarch. Uh, X what caliber is this? This is 6.5 Creedmoor. Okay. I'm kind of a big 308 guy, but I do advance with the times and not get left behind in the <laughs> dust, so I do learn as I go. But that, we were talking about that break earlier. What do you have going on there? This break, I love this break. It works on ARs, it works on bolt guns. It's a little funky looking, but uh, X2 Dev Group. Um, they used to be under a different name. They developed this. It reduces recoil, it reduces uh, jump, and it also reduces sound just a little bit, though it's not designed to. And uh, it just helps you stay on target. If you have a natural point of aim and something like this on there, a muzzle brake that actually does the job it's supposed to, you can stay on target quite easily. And it helps with teaching classes when you show the students, like, hey, get your natural point of aim, get the right equipment, and look, you can stay on target, follow up shot if you need it, or at least you're observing whatever it is. With the SWAT guys, it's really important. Um, I've got a 20 MOA rail, and then of course I have this wonderful scope from you guys. And Tango I 20. I freaking for love Tango 20. Yeah. Uh, what, uh, what, what rings do you have on here? Uh, free ones that were given to me. That was the best <laughs> kind. Yeah. I'm not going to tell the company's name yet because again, these are prototypes. Okay. So until they're actually in development, I uh, keep it under hat. We were talking about this a little bit before we start off. What is, so you've got this Velcro. This is something about, it's a, kind of a random place for Velcro. Why do you have that on there? It's just a piece of pile of Velcro that I glued on there. It's for if I'm on a barricade or something else. I could hook stuff to it if I need to strap something to it. Uh, it keeps from wear and tear on the actual stock. But even if I need to ghillie this thing up, I can wrap something around here, attach it there. I've got so many gimmicks and gadgets that go along with the job so I don't have to carry too much stuff. You like Ariel from Little Mermaid? Well, something like that. If I find it and it works, it works. But I'm not a fan of carrying a ton of weight for no apparent reason. So I will create patches or create areas to attach things to uh, facilitate the things I need. Yeah, and we, you saw, we, know, we got some range time today behind the Tango 20. Can you kind of tell us what you're looking for in an optic and you know why you are running the Tango 20? Tango 20 definitely has clarity. It has a good reticle in it that I trust. Um, I've tested it out. I teach everybody that you have to learn how to dial first before you learn how to hold. So they make sure they understand their equipment. If you can't dial it, you don't know what you're talking about. So if you're holding it, you're just faking the funk. So I've taken this out through the paces, stretched it out, 6.5 Creedmoor. This actually has gone out to 1,800 um, and hit. And 1,800 yards, that is. So I know dialing it it does the numbers. And then I went back and did the holdovers to test it out, like do the numbers actually match? And it did match the dope that I had. And then I went and did a box test. If any of you guys don't know what a box test is, you start at the one corner, you dial, you keep aiming at that one spot, and it impacts, and you dial again over, and you keep aiming at that one spot, but it impacts and work your way around till you come back to center. Yeah, we've beaten the hell out of these things, and they're still, they're still running pretty, pretty good. Um, this thing goes in the trunk of my car in a less than padded bag and it uh, gets beat up. Uh, there's a SWAT team down by Houston that uh, I do a lot of training with and they're running one right now. Uh, one of the prototypes you guys gave me to run and they beat the ever-loving piss out of it and it's still running fine right now. So, so far these are reliable and I trust the, uh, the math. Not just the math but just the reliability and everything that goes along with it. Yeah and I mean, I mean yeah, like we, we could talk about this all day, but we'll go ahead and move on just for the sake of time to uh, 
your your LPVO setup here and your, your Triarch is the 17.3. I run the 17.3, I freaking love it, it's a flat gun. So talk a little bit about what you have on this setup here. So again, I keep working with the SWAT team guys. They do a lot of entry. You got the snipers over watching, you got the entry team guys. But here in Texas, you can go from city to country real quick. So they need to be able to go into a room, clearly see the reticle, see the threat through it if they need to engage a threat. I don't want to say anything bad, but you guys understand what I mean. If you run into a bad guy, you have to do what you have to yeah, do. It's a job, right? Exactly. But once they get out to the country, they also need the same kind of zoom, clear uh, glass, and the uh, reticle to make longer shots. This thing needs to go out to 300 out in the country. If you look around farmland and stuff, it can stretch out a lot farther than that. So the average patrol rifle that the city guys are carrying, when they go to support the outer reaches, uh, the optics, the red dots just don't do the job. And some of the other uh, CCOs and other things they put on there just don't do it. And I don't want to name other companies, but there's some that are like this that don't hold zeros as well. They may not have the reticle that they can really do holdovers on, or it's confusing. Some are mill to fucking MOA. Some are just confusing on the math inside. This is pretty simple. It sticks to mills, and they learn their holdovers, and they can take it out to 300 if they had to. Hopefully they never have to use it, but it's reliable, and they know exactly what they're using it for. And we talked, you know, originally, if you wanted to go for the Tango, uh, so we have the Tango 8, right, which is our first focal plane, and then the, the uh, Echo 6, which is our second focal plane, and you, you like the second focal plane. So what is kind of your, your, your uh, reasoning there for going first versus second? Mainly for the guys doing the room clearing. Okay. So when I'm working with them and they need to be able to go in and adjust everything, it's just uh, when you start putting the lights to it and all yep. the other gadgets they attach to their guns, that one makes the most sense for the guys I've been working with. So it's based off their recommendations. Um, yeah. And I'm going with it. Yeah, so that's it. Again, Tim Kellner from Kellner Snipercraft, Brandon from AccuFire Technology. Uh, thanks for joining us.